Okay, now that winter's kind of coming on, you can see all the leaves on the ground here. I just took a, a break for a minute. We'll rake the leaves here and let them dry a little bit after lunch. Uh, this block is garbage. It's a, it's a Model A block. I think it's a 29. I don't know if Corey can zoom in here. You'll see. I mean, well, it, it can be fixed. Let me preface that. It's got a long crack there, crack there. We can metal stitch it. From his Model A blocks, I probably over the years have about 15 of these things, so I don't think it's probably worth it. This one was rebuilt sometime in the 40s or 50s. It's been sleeved. It had exhaust valve seats put in. Obviously, the bat was redone. I don't like the sleeves. That's one of the reasons why I probably got to fix it. And of course, you can get in here all good. They braze the bottom of the, the sleeves, and it was the old way to do it rather than putting a step. So this one's just going to be a trial block. I had picked up an old Van Norman 777 here a couple years ago. We bored some stationary engines out with it. We used to have a Rottler we bored off a buddy, but unfortunately took it back and moved back to Alberta. So this one's going to be, I'll try this, the first one with the Van Norman. This deck, because I just want to see how it works, so I'm going to hold it down. I'm just going to wire wheel the deck. The other decks, when I actually do it properly, I'm going to surface grind them at work there. But uh, this is, like I said, just a trial block. It's already been sleeved, so I'm not going to do any damage to it. But I'll uh, wire wheel the deck. I'm going to see how I'm going to hold it. I might make just like the modern ones and just put a rod through here just to hold it. We'll see. But... Uh, yeah, so that's going to be uh, the goal here. I, well, there's an upcoming video we we're playing around. I got the ID on there. We're putting valve seats in them. I'm going to go to the bigger valve, the uh, the one and uh, almost three quarter, seven, ten uh, intake valves on these things. So uh, hopefully this uh, this winter I get a motor up and going. I'm going to try. If I screwed up, we can rebound it. I'm going to try to line board here. There's two different ways to do it that I, that I can do here. I'm going to try both ways and see how it goes. Go for inserts. So that's. Uh, that's going to be hopefully this winter's project. Uh, a lot of stuff I'm doing for other people is winding down. So I guess time to work on my own stuff for a bit. But yeah, so we'll uh, get this cleaned up. We'll throw the bar in here and see how it cuts. Okay, we got the deck cleaned up on this now. Like I said, this block, for all intents and purposes, is garbage. I mean, if you can, Corey can zoom in here, you might get it. It's cracked all the way down here. It can be stitched. And it's also cracked through here, which probably isn't the end of the world, but it's cracked through there. Like I said, I have so many of these blocks. The time it takes, and honestly, money we do on the big rare stuff, like say if that engine was was cracked, we would do it. But on a Model A block, that these things literally are a dime a dozen. They're getting harder to get. There's still lots of them around. Probably not worth it. I did just some quick measurements on here. The deck is actually in really nice shape. It has been. It looks like it's surface ground. Of course, you can pick it up. But if you see the serrations there, it looks like it's been surface ground. But the sad thing is, like this deck, like not even a thou and a half won't fit any which way you want to go on it sideways. Front ways it don't matter and the straight edge is good on this because i had to qualify a little bit of work here a while ago but it's uh it's good one I, I just make the deck here these are supposed to be i think 11.5 to 11.505 this is actually sitting 11.475 it's been decked at least 25 thou like i said you can definitely see because model a's remember correctly the the marks go this way in the machine at this one you can see it's been surface ground or done on a planer lord only knows how they did it this probably would have been rebuilt back in the uh in probably the 40s but uh so yeah it's a good candidate to fool around to see just in case if we do make a mistake then at least it's you know not the end of the world with a deck height that run then you have to start playing with your pistons because now your pistons are going to pop up a fair amount so you might have to end up decking your pistons down a bit to make it work so uh like i said this block will be good enough to uh to throw the boring bar i think that's going to be the next thing i do i got one of them cleaned up here there is a, a fair amount of ridge on there that's always the thing is people do you Put your boring bar and center on the non-worn part of the worn part. I'm of the opinion you do it on the non-worn part because that's back to your original datum. If I had a block really badly worn, I think what I would do is just set up on the mill, go in for a bit just to clean up so you know where your true datum is, and go, like I said, this one, hopefully, well, we might even do this one, might do it with a Model B block, and try to, to bore out for the mains here. Put insert bearings in there, so. But I think next is to, uh, to pop the bar on here. I'm probably end up going to make a proper bar to go through here for a hold down bar. For right now, I think I'll just try the old goofy one with the, the rod on it and see how that works. But we'll, uh, we'll put it up there and see how it goes. Instead of working on that, you should be working on this little gem. Oh, the little uh, from Dougie's there. Yeah, a little cart. No back wheels though. It's slicks. <laughs> well, we'll get this, uh, we'll get the boring bar thrown on here and see what we can do. All righty. Okay, we have the Van Norman set up now. It's an old 777S. We do have a clamp for safety in case somebody's wondering. There is a Bessie on the side here so it won't fall down. Um, neighbor's dog likes to bark a lot. What we're going to do here is I'll use the original foot, but I won't use the original uh, uh, this guy here. It goes underneath the bottom of the cylinder. All I do is I run a stud all the way down through here. catches in here. 
and then I just run the strap clap across the, the oil pan rails. So all you do is you gotta pull it a little. I think I'm old to get her in here, but I don't think so. I should make a better setup. I might end up actually making something to go through onto the uh, onto the uh, the main bearing. I'll probably use a piece of turn ground pole and shaft and so that way this guy goes here. And really, I, I do have an actual engine stand made up that goes on the side here. I seem like taking the engine off that's on it currently. Is that that green model B that engine? That green model B one, yeah. That would better. Also, yes, I do realize I do not have main bearings torqued on here. Like I said again, this is just a junk block to see how it's going to go. Yes, I know I was taught you're supposed to have your main bearings torqued. Don't have to go stupid. To Actually, well, I'm going to tighten that up. I got to center it first. Yeah. There we go. It's loose. We've got the cat paws in. For anybody curious, there's the C cat paws. See the boring door still center itself. Oops, are on there. Right? So you can see the cat paws come out. What I said before is I'm letting them touch right up here. And then I think you're supposed to go like two clicks past. So now the cat paws are centered. We'll torque that down. We should shoot this video in black and white so everybody would think that it's from the... Oh, you're good. It's dirty enough. I mean, you can obviously see this thing's been sitting outside for a while. Yeah. Truth be told, this block, the old man ran in the late 50s. You remember that cut down uh, sedan? Yeah. This is the block out of it. So, I mean, he's had it for a long time. Now, just for safety's sake, for paranoia... For one, sorry, we'll spin that loop. We'll take a thou and a half feeler gauge. And I don't go underneath anywhere there. And they don't go underneath anywhere there. So, by rights, as long as the boring bar cuts square, we should be go to the board. Right now, I'm still using the old, uh, the old, uh, the old uh, braze carbide ones. This one's sharpened up. I'll use this. I got to get off my ass. Maybe this week, I'm either going to make or buy an indexable one. So that way, then I don't have to sharpen all the time using the old, uh, the old lap that's here. This lap is almost worn out. There's not a heck of a lot left of it anymore. It still does have a little bit, but not much. There's just a real sharpening jig there. For people familiar with the old Van Normans. But I think I'm going to go with a uh, with an indexable. I will just I'm just lazy. We have made up some tools like we've used this for some stationary engines. Here's uh, just out of a piece of an old end mill, just uh, a sleeve trimmer because we sleeved a couple engines with this guy. I've never bored a car engine out with this. The first time using a car engine. That's why it's a similar deal for bolting it down. We always have just a springboard plate, but. Uh, yeah, it works pretty good, but like I said, we'll, uh, we'll uh, hopefully get off my ass this week and get something made. I do have to put a stop on here. The stop was never on here, the stop rod. And I think cause since we're going to more than likely be sleeving a block, I'm going to be putting a, a clamp with a dial indicator so we can go to the same height for everyone. But uh, like I said, first of all, first things first, we'll see how it cuts, see if it's straight, see if it's round. Like I said, I remember we used a couple years ago to do a couple little small engines and they came all straight and round. So. And then we also had a flop too. We had that flop. Well, that was that. That was the Rottler bar. Yeah. So, um, like I said, we uh, borrowed a friend had bought a. It was an NOS Rottler bar. It was an FA2B, and we bored out Chris's flathead like in the Hudson. There we bored out, and then we went to go do Derek's Mustang. We also did a Model A block too, and it had nothing but vibration problems. Yeah. And it turned out it was something in the the thrust washer in here was allowing it to float. And once we got that oh, fixed, sure, it yeah. fixed it open. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. So, we'll try this guy. We'll. Uh, We'll move the cat paws off. I'll wait to do it off camera there. I'll get a tool set up here. It's our micrometer here. And uh, like I said, these bores, they probably got it just by where having the mic to get, but there's at least five foul wear there. Like there's a good ridge on there. So we'll probably end up just as for shits and giggles, set it up like we're going to do a 30 foul bore. So it'll be from the top part there, 25, 27 foul cut, depending. So uh, we'll get that set up and we'll be back in a couple minutes. Okay, well issue is i only had two short uh cutters here in this kit that i got here and you can see the issue is where i gotta grab it there'd be nothing left so we're gonna try a, a more modern carbide this is a little ccmt 21.51 it's got the little radius on it how well it works it might work good it might work shit it might vibrate the whole down we're gonna find out though if it works good i will i'll probably end up buying uh, a few more of these just for different lengths to have but um the only thing is these cutters, you can see this is a different geometry than the cutters here. This one's a straight down. This one comes in more of a threading tool. But we'll see how this cuts. If it cuts good, I'm going to leave it. 
like I said, if you're gonna do sleeves, the only issue is, like I said, is still you'll have a little overlap in the big ski links. Probably not that big of a deal. But um, on a scale of one to ten, what do you rank it? I, I, I give it about a six if it's gonna work good. Hmm. So it, it is a fair negative rake. Like you can see how much the negative rake is on it. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen. Go or blow. That's about it. So I'll put this in. We'll get her set up, and we'll be a couple minutes. If I can't find my little, uh, I can't remember if this thing ever came with the little. Uh, Retraction tool. Guys who use it before know what I'm talking about. It's a little retraction tool. Or is that? No, that was the Roller had the reaction tool. How the hell did we get this one out? What? Too many years, people. Too many years because this guy goes in here. I get clicks in. No, I can't remember. The, the little Rottlers have a little threaded rod that you knock them out. But I can't. Ooh. I can't remember. Seems awfully a big cut there. I only set it for nine, uh, I guess I should show the camera. I only set it for about nine, 901. I'm gonna pull that back out again. We back up, man. So I'll pull that back out, make sure everything's good. So that looks like a heck of a cut. That's a, that's a, that's a, a mighty big cut on here. Unless there's a piece of shit back in there, maybe. That could be too. Yeah. I'll be back. Okay. It's been a while since I used this, so I just fired up and just literally just fit it down. I took maybe, I don't know, a 16th down just to see. I, uh, I guess when I tightened up the cap paws, I didn't give it a good jiggle. I wasn't 100% centered. I did it. We did it. Everything is good. That's a good rule of thumb. I guess you'd always just run down, put a feeler gauge if you're on paranoid like me. Like I said, I haven't run for a long time. So now what we'll do, I'm in low range right now. I mean, I'm at kind of the, the mid range of the bar here. So it's, 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 it's just over three and seven, eight. So try in low range with the cutter. We'll see what happens. It's been a while since I used it. I think I remember how to use this. So we'll fire it up. I think if memory serves me right, this guy's got it engaged. There it goes. Watch those tips fly. Oh. It just because it went through the where the ridge was. Oh, okay. she's barely even cutting. Now that's how worn this is. Ah, I thought thought maybe the the cutter slipped or something. No, because it was it was such a it's so, so worn. It went heavy, 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 and nothing that came through. Yeah. We well, can hear how it was centered on on here, and now you hear it's off to one side of it. I guess the piston had worn to one side of it. Hmm. Yeah, you can actually see the ridge. It didn't even clean the ridge up. That would be for a 30 foul overbore. You'd have to come from this side and see. You see right there? I don't know whether you're going to see it or not. That's how worn this engine was. So the 30 foul overbore wouldn't have cleaned up. So, like I said, this is just trial just to see how it cuts. It sounds okay. It feels it's not, okay. It's not vibrating or nothing. Nothing shaking. I do have the cat claws drawn in. Talk to people. I talked to the older guys that ran Van Norman. Some are adamant you have to run the cat claws out. Some for smaller boards don't even bother. So this is a short board. It's only seven and seven and a half or seven and three quarters. I'm not even going to run the cat claws. But I mean, I guess in the ideal world, you're supposed to just just bring the cat claws in just to touch the. Uh, the cylinder you're boring. Yeah, I guess it helps. I guess especially longer boards it helps. It's a short enough board. If I ever heard it start to vibrate, I'd be a little more worried. I would probably send them open. So you just on here. You have to I think it's supposed to be two clicks. The manual says you're supposed to just, 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 just to hold it. Now on the boards two and three, you don't have to worry about hitting the web or nothing. On this board here, the web you got to be a little bit careful. And we did put a mark here, but it's pretty. Uh, yeah, it's a ghetto mark. Yeah. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, put a clamp on here with a dowling gear, like I said before. That way, when I'm doing, uh, if I've got to put sleeves in, that I can go the same spot every time, and I know I'm good. If this cutter works out, since it's on, uh, I think it's 80 degrees. If you're taking enough light cuts, I don't know if I'd go down with another cutter just to make a flat bottom for the sleeve. Ah, probably I would do it to the proper way, I guess. I don't know what you can hear. It sounds okay. Seems to be cutting okay. I don't know if you're going to film all this or not. So the cutter might even fast forward some yeah, of it. Yeah, because it's going to say it's almost half done now. Yeah, or if not, we'll just end it here and then when we pull it apart. It is going down. Here's your feed here. And this, is, this one's this is a two-speed boring bar, but only single feed. You can get these guys in a four-feed. That'd be nice like an S4. It's actually for people who never used it. Actually, this is the S is for a suction. You have a little D that goes up here, goes to a vacuum. These things are meant to bore inside engines, like you have your piston pin let go on an engine. 
did it uh, with the engine still and she has to pull the engine out so it's stuck all the chips out. One of the guys under his dad, he still remembers doing this. He still uh, would do the odd grain truck. They knock the piston out, pull the head off, clean it up, run the vacuum, put it together, and I guess cross your fingers, hope you got it clean. Hopefully you got it clean, if not. Rup, bro. Uh huh. All those fine shavings and oil, that's not gonna help. No. But they did it, I mean, they did it a lot. All right, I think we'll be back in a minute when this thing's done. Okay, that was is actually a very nice finish. The only thing that would happen though is I'll have to just as a little bit of, of play in this guy as it went through where the unworn part where the ring made its groove up at the top of where the ring land is. It, I don't know if you saw it jumped a bit and it just literally literally just chipped about one or two thou off the edge of my cutter there. It's hard to see my not pick of the camera because now when I put it back in the cutter, I said at 902, it's actually about 898 and you can just feel just a hair bit of a lip there. But sure, nice finish. It is a I obviously oh, can't get with the camera, I don't think, in there. But if, especially, no, especially for a finish, leave three four thou for honing. That would be just perfect, as long as it's round and straight. That's the key. Well, that's the key. It'd be nice to finish you want, but if it ain't round and straight, it ain't gonna do any bloody good. But yeah, so we'll reset the cutter, and uh, I'll take one more cut. I'll set it again for uh, 902. I might even go 903. Ooh, living on the edge. Living on the edge a bit. Then we'll, uh, we'll, um, I'll make sure to hold it by hand when I go through that, uh, the bar, the top part there. The only other issue is, is where they've brazed the sleeves in the bottom here. If the cutter did not seem to like that at all. I, that could have been even where I chipped the cutter. I don't know. So we'll have to, uh, I mean, like I said, for this block, I don't really care that much about. If it was honestly a sleeve like this, unless it had really rare meanings, I don't think I'd even care about it, quite honestly. But, or I would knock the sleeves all together. But uh, yeah, we'll set this up and we're back in a minute. Okay, we... Uh, I just indexed the bit and it took us right back to about 902. So now we'll uh, turn her on our helper coming in just to make sure it doesn't uh, jump on me again there. We'll see what happens. Yeah, she's just tickling it now. It still didn't clean up right where that land was. That's how much it was worn. Like there's, you won't see it hard. Like there's a rust in it, but there's a land there. So this engine had a lot of miles on it probably after the rebuild. It still actually never cleaned up in one little spot there. Well, I'll let it run down, and we'll take a look because it's, it's just, just. Six inches to go. Yeah. Okay, let's see what this one did. Hopefully nothing moved. Oh, cutter looks brand new. We'll just mic it there, see what we get. Let's see. let's see what we get here. So size is still good, it's between 901, about 901 and a half, 902, that's what it was before. The only weird thing is, unless it was just the well, first time using it, I'm going to set up and take another cut about 10 thou because it's slightly, it's a slight bit of a lip bigger here. I don't know if maybe the cutter wasn't fully seated in here and pushed it back in. Like I guess there could have been a bit of crap in there we didn't blow it. Now it's clean. I'm just going to set it up for another 10 thou and see what it does. But the finish is really nice. Really nice. I'm happy with that. So yeah, so we'll uh, put that guy back in. I can't remember, honestly. Someone would correct me, probably, but I can't remember if there's supposed to be a spring back in here to help push it up. I can't remember. Is either that or that rotler had it? I don't remember anymore. You could put a spring in there, I guess, would be the end of the world. I'm going to say probably most of our viewers won't know, including myself. Well, that rotler was a nice bar. It even had uh, a power uh, return on it. I said it was army surplus. So I'll go about 9, about 9, 12.
refrain from saying anything about the neighbors here. So we're set at 912. in there so because when you put the the rottlers in you feel there's a little bit more of a spring in there it has a little bit more but what i'll do is i'll help this one down just to make sure so here we go again okay jack i'll take a second to go i don't know if i should go into high range or not ah uh, this is where you get to a part for what it is definitely here cutting there Oh, that looks better. There, now I just took the backlash out. I think next time I'll roll it the other way. Now she's cleaned up. Yeah, next time what I'll do is I'll try to keep the backlash forward instead of backlash backwards because then when it comes off it, I see what I, I, see what I did wrong there. I get used to using stuff that work with ball screws so you don't really worry about backlash too much. Oh, I started on old garbage like this. The big nozzle was World War I vintage. The swing eight feet. Big lace. Alright, we'll be back. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we're just gonna check to see how round and straight we are. I have my good mid Toya dial board gauge at home. At work here, sorry, this is just a cheapy. It, uh, weird thing, it says half a thou, but there's no like thou increments on it, so I don't know what that's about. Anyways, I gotta run, uh, that one there, the 3.8, and then I know I gotta run that guy underneath, and that guy underneath. Now, let's see how straight down we are. Now, the only issue was, I said, when we came through the top, it off to be a little more careful. There's, there is a little bit of backlash on that old guy that worm gear's worn. I'll have to kind of, especially going through the lip here, I'll just have to keep counter pressure on it. I guess Corey can get that there. Holy crap, I must have used this thing before. Okay, well, we'll see. It's about plus one, give or take. Look at that, plus one, so it's cutting straight. And it depends where I go there, but we're all, yeah, basically plus one there. And we're basically plus one there if I get it. So I would say we're well within a half a thou. I mean, I could put a 10th reading dial on here and I know we'll have a little bit of issue. But not too bad in the backyard with an old Van Norman boring bar. I think what I'll do with the next one, though, I'll probably set up on the bridge port and I'll probably deck them on there. Oh, I might take them to the grinder work. I don't know. I haven't undecided yet. But unfortunately, not too many people fuck around with this stuff. Oh, try not this way. Not too many <laughs> fart around with this stuff anymore. But yeah, it's uh try to get this one going anyways, hopefully for the summertime. If it is, I'd maybe do a couple of them. Oh, not this block, but no, no, no. This block, I said, is just an experimental block. Like I said, I I got some B's and some A's, but uh, this one was just playing around because I said I had it. It was decent, and it was uh, it was here. We have to dig it out. The other one just sitting out the farm there. So, but yeah, so it uh, the old Van Norman still bores pretty straight. Strange. I guess what you could honestly see, what I might even do, is I might because uh, I know this deck is basically good. Is take it to work, put it on the CMM, flip it upside down. And spot to actually see how perpendicular we are to the bore. Another way you could do, it, I guess, is run the boring bar this side and this side and just tram it down and see what it's like. But the CMM would give you a pretty good idea. But yeah, so it cuts relatively straight and true. Since uh, we're fairly not poor, but next thing to it here, it'll be getting honed by hand with a drill. I was making for doing the big cylinders, like the big tractor cylinders, that I do have kind of a, we'll say, a semi automatic hone. But I mean, for this, hell, I'll do it by hand. Not like we're doing it all. Even just so you want to set something up, have a bar beside it to take the torque and stroke it up and down. I might even invest and get a set of plateau homes just to help the ring seat in better. Mm -hmm. They're not cheap, but I mean, for the little bit that we're going to do, give these things as much life as you can. I'll put at least some sort of, this one won't be, or none, uh, the A's I probably won't do pressure to them, but at least put the, that little goofy oil filter so I'll get some, some of the shit out of there anyway. Yeah. But I guess I'm round with right now, but that's it. Then the next, I don't know if you can see all the junk in here. There's an IDL. There's a junk D-block set up on there. We were, we were fooling around putting some seats in. I think there's going to be a video on that. Watch yourself. Uh, that block is toast. It sat in <laughs> manure there, and you can see it's actually yeah. eat the deck away. That's how much, that, that's how corrosive cow manure is, or cow shit, whatever you want to call it. But the old IDL does good. Mm -hmm. 
uh, so we'll put uh, seats in there. If I'll tell you a funny story about this machine. I, we never, I never used one before, so I, I bought this years ago. And Chris, when he was doing his flathead there, put bigger valves in, we had to put valve seats in it. And uh, this machine really isn't designed for it, but you know, whatever. We phoned around Winnipeg, nobody wanted to do it anymore. Nobody had the capabilities to do it, they said, so whatever. So we, uh, I thought it was super fussy to put seats in, so I made there somewhere around here, made ground plates for this thing. Because how an IDL works is according to this little key slot there, everything centers the machine. I thought everything was super fussy, so we made these parts that keyed, everything moved nicely. Centered around the cam bearings, I showed with the crank cam bearings. Then we go to do it, <laughs> didn't even matter. We could just made just some quick thing up. But it, it does go high enough to do a V8 flathead on, that's about the limit of the machine. Yep. But it will do, we did that years ago now. Many. But then, then we found out there was a guy that actually does machine kind of like this one's garage, 10 bucks a piece. <laughs> so we went to all that work, it wasn't worth it. Well, whatever. But to do that, that's the reason I bought this thing was doing Model A blocks. This thing, this thing only ever did a couple sets of valve seats in its life. But anyways, we'll do that, and like I said, the Bridgeport mills in the corner there. We'll, I don't know if I'll deck it on that or deck it at uh, that worked on the grinder. I don't know. Hmm. Well, yeah, so that's uh, we'll probably uh, this being sleeves, I think will be okay. But I mean, I'll probably try a few more, make sure, see what size it is compared to my uh, cutter there, and then we kind of know. I'll probably make stands up so I can work on a little bit higher too. But uh, I think that's about it for today. So, yeah, so if you like it, like, link, subscribe. Leave a comment. Leave a comment. There'll be more Model A junk probably happening. And, and honestly, some days I don't feel like I might not have to touch this for another month. I mean, it's just... The nature of it. Yeah, and the nature of whenever I feel like it. I get pretty lazy. I do this for a living. Well, not engine machine, regular machining. So sometimes it's like, yeah. But yeah, so... Uh, yeah, watch our upcoming videos. We'll, we'll be playing around with it more. Alrighty. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Hope you guys learned something. I did.